A coalition of medical professionals who argue stopping gun violence is very much in their lane is likely to grow even more determined in the aftermath of the violence that's rocked two American cities, first yesterday, then early this morning. Our cover story is reported by Dr. John LaPook. It happened again. I heard do, 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 and then it went do, 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 do. Twice in less than 24 hours. People just started bolting straight into the store uh, in order to get, get to cover. Are any of us surprised? Can anybody help? Within the last week, who here has seen a gunshot victim? I think people think that if their loved one gets to the hospital that there's magic there. But sometimes it's just too much for us. If there was ever a time for preventive medicine, it's now, says this group of doctors. Um, a grandfather was shot yesterday. A, a son was shot yesterday. Yesterday, a, a mother was shot yesterday. And then the, the day before that, there were five other people that were shot that were connected to Americans in this country. They've had enough and seen enough. The only thing worse than a death is a death that could be prevented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, right. and, and to go and talk to a mom of a child who was normal at breakfast and now is not here is the worst possible thing. And honestly, it drives us, it drives us to address this problem. Doctors Ronald Stewart, Albert Osbar, Neva Lubin Johnson, Stephanie Bonney, Chris Barsati, Megan Rainey, and Roger Mitchell were in Chicago this past winter as more than 40 medical organizations who normally operate separately joined forces. We have nurses, we have doctors, we have sociologists. How is it that we can disseminate this knowledge that we're creating? Has anything like this ever happened before in terms of discussing gun violence? No. 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 And we recognize that this is an epidemic that we can address. Their meeting followed a tweet from the National Rifle Association last November that helped fuel a movement. The NRA tweets out, someone should tell self-important anti-gun doctors to stay in their lane. As I was leaving the hospital, I just turned around and snapped a picture of the waiting room. Dr. Bonney, a trauma surgeon in Newark, New Jersey, posted the photo to Twitter along with this message. Hey, NRA, do you want to see my lane? Uh, here's the chair that I sit in when I tell parents that their kids are dead. And you hit send, mm -hmm. and then what happens? I was part of a chorus. A chorus of thousands of medical professionals who responded, this is our lane. Our motto is do no harm for physicians. But I think the community felt that harm was being done to us by that tweet. I remember sitting there and thinking, how can you lecture docs, many of whom are gun owners, about what we do and don't know? And how can you... Physician Megan Rainey is chief yeah. research officer for Affirm, an organization trying to address gun violence through the same tools doctors use to combat problems like obesity, the opioid crisis, and heart disease. That two and a half million dollar fund that we are raising is going to be to help us identify the shooters before they shoot. This public health approach is not new. In the 1950s, doctors worked with the auto industry to help make cars and roads safer. We can state clinically that the severe crushing injury to the chest of the driver has been reduced by one half by the safety steering wheel. In the 60s and 70s, they spoke out against the dangers of tobacco. It is a judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. And in the 80s and 90s, to combat HIV and AIDS, they promoted safe sex and research. The best protection against infection right now, barring abstinence, is the use of a condom. Today, the focus is gun violence in all its forms. It may surprise you to know that mass shootings make up less than 1% of firearm-related deaths. The leading cause is suicide, followed by homicide and then accidents. But good answers on how best to prevent these deaths are hard to come by. This is an issue of 
federally funded political advocacy, a attempt by the CDC to bring about gun control advocacy all over the United States. That's because of 1996 legislation defunding any research at the CDC promoting gun control. $2.6 million from the CDC budget was reallocated, and it had a chilling effect on almost all firearm research. What was lost was 20-some years of effort to understand and prevent a huge health problem. You know, Dr. Garen Wintemute's work on handgun violence lost government funding after Congress passed that 1996 legislation. Consciously, deliberately, repeatedly, over and over, we turned our back on this problem. It's as if we as a country had said, let's not study motor vehicle injuries. Let's not study heart disease or cancer or HIV AIDS. And the result, I believe, is that tens of thousands of people are dead today whose lives could have been saved if that research had been done. In 2018, Congress said government dollars could be used to research gun violence, just not to promote gun control. But Wintermute says federal research is still underfunded. Everybody's doing good right now. Okay. While private donations for research are now increasing, over the years, Dr. Wintermute has spent more than $2 million of his own money to continue his research at the University of California, Davis. Are you a wealthy man who can afford to just do that as a rounding error? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not rounding error, uh, but I live a very simple life. I earn an, an academic sector ER docs salary. So you are changing your lifestyle in order to fund this research or have in the past? Yes, that's correct. What drives you to do that? People are dying. Given the capacity to do it, how, how can I not? It, it really is just that simple. Yeah, his work has led to some surprising conclusions. For example, his studies revealed that in some states, comprehensive background checks as implemented had no effect on the number of firearm-related deaths. That's in part because of a lack of communication among agencies. We have learned that probably hundreds of thousands of prohibiting events every year do not become part of the data that the background checks are run on. Consider the 2017 shooting of 46 parishioners at a church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. We've lost some great friends today. Due to a domestic violence conviction, the shooter should have been stopped from buying any guns. But that information was never shared with the FBI, which oversees the background check system. So you think, OK, it's not as effective as we want, but it can become effective if we do A, B, and C. There's no question about it. But it's policy proposals from doctors on issues like background checks and registrations that concern gun rights advocates. The point the NRA was trying to make with its tweet was, uh -huh. what makes doctors experts on gun policy? Doctors are not experts on gun policy unless they do their homework. What doctors are experts on is the consequences of violence. If doctors choose to be, they can become experts on policy. Is advocating for gun control part of your mission? No. no. This oh. is about stopping shooters before they shoot. The NRA did not respond to our repeated requests for an on-camera interview. However, in a phone conversation earlier this year, two representatives said the organization does support research into gun-related violence, but expressed concern that, say what they will, the ultimate goal of many who advocate such research is to take away the guns of responsible citizens. We're not well served by this overly simplistic view of simply two, two sides fighting each other. We have to work together, and that includes engaging firearm owners as a part of the solution. Not a part For of the these problem. doctors, so the issue is not about whose lane it is. It's about what they can do. I know that the House of Medicine can fix this. Yes. Yes. And enough is enough. 